everybody. Welcome to the Bulls Tabletop Hour. I'm Adam Harry with... JR. And again, uh, it's a it's a cold, rainy day here in Austin, which is weird. Yeah, it's it's insane. It, the temperature it was not 90 yeah. degrees when I woke up this morning. It instead uh, appears it's, to be some so kind weird. of uh, anti-heat, and I don't like it. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, this heat is not normal. It, well, it doesn't mean, feel like normal heat. It yeah. feels like the opposite the of opposite heat. The opposite of heat. Like the lack of heat, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's our weather report. Good. Now on to the good stuff. Let's talk about games. Woo! Yeah. We have Warhammer 40k Kill Team. We have the Commander's Expansion in-house. You can see it. It's right here. Right here. Uh, we got the book. We got the cards in the box. Um, yeah. It's yeah. it's coming out uh, for pre-order, I think, last weekend. Yes. So it'll be out uh, in weekend. stores this weekend. Yeah. Like Friday? Saturday? One uh, of those days. Saturday, Saturday probably. Saturday, yeah. I think Saturday is the official official day. So you can go to your store, uh, your favorite favorite local gaming store, or your local games workshop store, and yeah. pick up a copy. Um, so, JR, what's in Commanders? Commanders Kill Team introduces Commanders. Uh, what? Which are, spe- like, basically, they're your HQ choices, right? They exactly. let you take HQ choices from 40K and smash them... Uh, 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 you know, like peanut butter and chocolate style into yeah. games of uh, your kill team. Yeah. Now, uh, key thing too, this is an expansion. It is not necessary for kill team, but it does add some really cool stuff. Yeah, it does. Uh, the HQs are great. Uh, the the you psychic powers are now in there. Yeah, they add psychic yeah. powers, which uh, will be um, game changing, altering. Oh, game right? altering at least. Yeah, game altering. <laughs> they, they, they add a lot of extra uh, tactical flexibility and mm-hmm. options. You can do stuff with psychic powers that you can't do with without Very them. Very, and speaking of tactical flexibility, yeah. these commanders are also basically. Um, specialists. Yeah. And you just take them kind of like a regular specialist. And yeah. Uh, except you yeah. don't take them quite like a regular specialist because you, you you decide what level you want them at and that's that's where yeah. they're at forever. If you played the Rogue Trader expansion then you're familiar with this concept already. Yeah. Where you could kind of pick the level of the commander uh, from the different uh, uh, from factions. The different, yeah. Star Striders and the, the, the Glitchlings. Uh, the Nurgle pot rock, Pox Walking Glitchling The dudes. Geller Pox Infected. Yeah, those guys. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Basically, um, Glitchings they, were the little dude. Yeah, the little, the yeah. Little fox walker dude. They were yeah. the little, the little, little uh, niggling guys. Niggling guys. Yeah. The the little technical yeah. niggling guys. Anyway, anyway yeah. Uh, yeah uh, but but Vane and and uh, Gerg Thrice Curse. Thr- thr- yeah, Thrice that Curse. That guy. That guy. They were both uh, great examples of how commanders work because mm-hmm. you could kind of pick them at, at whatever level you wanted, and they had different powers depending yeah. on what you did. Uh, now you can sort of customize your own. Yeah. Uh, if if you want to get the most customizability out of a game. Hey man, this is this is where it's at. Yeah. Uh, with a whole bunch of new uh, specializations. Speaking uh, of the commanders, are real fast. Pretty much all the factions have them. Jr. Did you have a particular favorite? Did I have a favorite commander? I mean, I'm thinking it was probably a Tau guy, but that's just uh, that's just because you play them. Actually, my you know what my favorite one in here is surprisingly not a Tau guy. Really? Yeah, it's uh, probably one of your favorites, the Tyranid Prime. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Tyranid Prime is actually a beast. That guy is amazing. Yeah. Like, uh, that is one of my favorites. <laughs> with, with, what, like six wounds? Yeah. And and uh, uh, a ton of attacks. Well, high, uh, high, high toughness. High toughness. He's good like, all around her, but really, yeah. I love the uh, Gene Stealer uh, oh, Primor. The, yeah, the, the Patriarch. Patriarch. Not the Patriarch. The, uh, not, that's from the Gene Stealer Cultist. The, the, the Broodlord. The Broodlord, yeah. yeah. Um, if you've ever wanted to play like a slasher film, but on the tabletop, uh, I guys, feel like the yeah. Broodlord all loaded up is definitely where that where that you know what I'm talking about. I do, I do. Like, like, he's you, got like, he's got six attacks. You can yeah. like you can give him any of the the like oh, yeah. like because because you can load him up with a, a couple of the the new specializations yeah. that they introduced in the game. He can take the stealth specialization, yeah. which which can make him like super mobile, so you can yep. get him wherever you want. You can give him the uh, ferocity specialization, which lets him like kind of tear ferociously oh, yeah. into guys and. Uh, and he's a psyker. If you he's, really love him, he yeah. he, is, he is an army unto himself in in kill team. Yeah, I think he much. comes out to close to nine uh, two hundred points. So if you <laughs> load him up, which he's just he just runs around the team. But it, it, seriously, he's like a slasher flip because yeah. it, it's just him against like ten models. That that yeah. that's a really good game. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, it's it's like Space Hulk, but where like the Gene Stealer is just one really big Gene Stealer. So. So I like it. like a reverse space like Hulk. a reverse space Hulk yeah. yeah well and that's that's kind of one of the things that we've been finding as we've been playing with commanders is yeah. it, it adds a lot to the game 
Uh, but where it really kind of shines is when you when you take it and sort of make it your own. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I've been kicking around with is is using like these kind of rules to to do like narratives that aren't that you that you would tell in 40k. But yeah. You, that you wouldn't use like like normal 40k rules for. So right, like you might take. A, a squad of, of tactical marines yeah. and then have a scenario where it's like okay they've got to blow up uh, this this reactor and the other person is, is running all of yeah. the sentries or whatever trying to stop them yep, yep. Kill so. Team's a really fun game f for you to experiment uh, with yeah. those different places there's a ton of missions that you can use and customize uh, to, to kind of create the, the, the scenario the narrative that you want to play yeah. um, I think it's great for small groups new players but really, like the narrative style. Like yeah. If you like narrative games, and I, I have, we both have yeah, really like we do. narrative stuff. We, we, we um, like that story. It's not always about just blowing your opponent off the table. Sometimes it's it's about like having those epic moments where it comes down to that one dice roll or something like that. Right. So, yeah. do, uh, do you get your satchel charge to yeah. to <laughs> to the base of the stampa or not? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but that's that's where uh, that's where commanders uh, and kill team in general shines. But uh, uh, there's a lot that that this kind of lets you feel the freedom to play around with. Like Adam was saying, yeah, you could totally. do like the slasher thing or like a big boss fight yeah. kind of a deal. Because we had we had joked about it before we even heard about the commanders expansion about because uh, we were we were playing around and I was like, man, it'd be really funny if. If I could just take like a hive tyrant, like the swarm lord, yeah. against an entire kill team, or maybe like two kill teams or something, just to see what would happen. Right. And I mean, it's not good. It's for not the exactly kill that, but <laughs> right, you could right. basically do that, right? right? Like you could you could pick something huge and scary and be like, all right, now let's see if you can take it down with your demon house. prince. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. Or maybe a primarch, you know, demon mm -hmm. runner around the table. I, again, it's going to be bad for the kill team. But it'll be fun for yeah, yeah. whoever's playing. Gaming. A narrative, a narrative event of it is. Well, it'll be. <laughs> I think it'll be interesting to see if you can do it. It's I a challenge, so. but it's also fun for the for the other players, I, I character agree. guys. But yeah, uh, the expansion set again is is going to be out in stores uh, this weekend for sure. Right. It's up for pre order right now from GW. And hot on the heels of it are going to be the eight new commanders that they've announced. Yep, um, they they come in their own individual boxes. Right, they have. Uh, tokens and stuff that come with them and uh yeah. if, you, if you get if you get a commander in a box you get some of the like exclusive stuff so you get yeah. like the new um you'll get like tactics that are exclusive to that specific commander so yep. like there's a tempestor prime for example right and he's going to have special rules that you'll only be able to find in this box there's going to be uh some some other stuff that we've talked about yeah. you can find it on our website belloflossil.net it's true which you can you know you probably know if you're here <laughs> that's a good point but yeah, it's uh, Commander's Expansion. It's out soon. Um, there's also some cards in this box. Uh, there's the tactics cards for the generic commander stuff. Yes. For the different uh, trees that they can kind of go into. Mm -hmm. There's also a bunch of extra cards, uh, which are just kind of blank. Um, blank data sheets yeah, for, data for sheet. Kill Team. Yeah, they're like little index style cards that you can write on to, yeah, for your, for your Kill Team yeah. to keep track. So uh, it's an interesting expansion. Uh, it's 20 blank cards. Uh, the psychic powers are also in this game too, which you talked about. Psychic powers are a little weird. Yeah. Uh, at this at this scale, in some ways, um, so, basically, yeah. There's a if your if your character has the option to take psychic powers, there's they're they're gonna two charts they have access yeah, to. Yeah. So they're gonna have their own like little mini yeah, uh, three, three power discipline. Yep. Um, which they'll be able to pick from, like the primaris, primaris librarian. Wow, yeah. that one's hard to say. Uh, has the has access to three powers from the librarius discipline. Yep. They have the veil of time, the might of heroes, and null zone, all of which function in kind of like a scaled down or, or, or like a similar way to the way they do yeah. in forty k. Might of heroes still gives you plus one strength, uh, toughness, and attacks. Mm -hmm. Hard. It's hard to go wrong with that. It's hard to go wrong with that. Um, There's also the big chart of seven powers that yes. are just kind of generic. One of those seventh. The seventh power is really just smite, Cybel, but which it's is, it's smite. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a kill team size version of smite. Right. Um, which you can replace with the, what is this one, just the psychic power chart? Yeah, they have like uh, six generic powers yeah. that, that you can swap out any or all of your psychic powers with. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, Wait, it's all of them? You can, I thought it was just no, one. No, so you can swap out oh, Cybolt sweet. and or any other powers you know for one of the ones listed here. So you could you could like wow. completely customize your... I thought it was just Cybolt. Yeah, so like your librarian right, yeah. could, could take, you know, Psychic Shriek and Misfortune and Fire Shield if you wanted. And these <laughs> these all let you do different things. Um, yeah. They're, I don't know, it's, it's, it, 
it's interesting. There's a a, a, a nice mix of, mm-hmm. of powers and the kinds of things you can do with them. There's defensive ones, like you can give yourself an invulnerable save. You yep. can give yourself uh, ob- obscurity. Uh, there's stuff that, like, you can use more offensively. You can force nerve tests. Although, oh, again, you know... Yeah, nerve tests... Leadership, we... depending on what yeah. you're doing, yeah. uh, depending on what you're fighting, is kind of hit or miss. But yeah. that's that's uh, that's psychic powers. That's kill team commanders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else is coming out? Uh, uh, what, what year is it? What, what, what month is it? What is it? Oh, it's October, which right. means it's Orctober, October, sort of. And that means get out of here, yeah, Kill Team. Kill, well, Kill Team is set in uh, Vigilus. It is set in Vigilus. Uh, and Vigilus and- is directly tied to the Orc release coming out, Speed Freaks. Yes. Which we are super pumped about. It's the first I'm- time in years... We've got new orc kits. Yeah, like um, like brand new. Yes. There's what like six now, right? Six new uh, There's the uh, orc four kits that we know. Five, five vehicles, vehicles and, and the, the the trike. The, yeah. The war boss on the trike thing. Yeah. We're super pumped about them. I can't name them all, but I think Jr. can. Yeah, I can. Shock so jump. There's the shock jump drag step. Uh-huh. Got one. The custom, custom, uh, uh, custom, not mega blaster. That's nope. the gun. custom booster blaster. Booster blaster. That's two. Thank you. The, uh, the scrap jet. The mega track scrap jet. Yeah. yeah. There's the. There's it's like two and a half for me, but three. Boomjack a snaz wagon. That's four. That's my favorite one. And that's the one that's the one that's snaz got the. the it just makes me think of Murder Face. That's the one that's Smash got the grappling on the front, Mad Max style. Yeah. There's the. Uh, Rucka truck squig buggy, which is a Rucka squig truck. based uh, weapons delivery system. And food based. Uh huh. And then there's the war trike. And the war trike, yes. Yeah. That's all of them. Yeah, that's all of them. That's. Nah, yeah. Well done, well done. How many times did you have to write those down? Fifty times. Yeah, that's that's why he knows them all. Um, but they're, they're they're pretty cool looking. I, I gotta are. say, uh, they do capture that orky scrap junk kind of look. Yeah, they're um, they're they're uh, ramshackle cobbled together weird pieces of technology that shouldn't yeah. work, but they do. They do. Uh, uh, the shock jump thing has a shock. Yeah, shock it's, cannon. It's, it's got a shock. Uh, what it's got a shock cannon for an engine. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's. Real fun because uh, we had been looking at this and being like, yeah. "All right, that there's no way that that thing doesn't like teleport itself into something." It's got to. We don't know yet for sure, but uh... well, we saw in the uh, the the uh, preview of the the oh, that's right. there speed was the freaks preview. rules. Yeah, yeah. We saw in the speed freaks preview, like we were vindicated. Uh, yeah, because they they just earlier today. Uh, showed off some of the rules of how speed That's freaks. That's right. Work. It was today. Uh huh. Yeah, and, my weekends are getting all blurry, man. Sorry. And uh, uh, so we know that the shock jump drag stuff, for instance, uh, in speed freaks. Now I don't know when That's they true. when That's they come true. over to 40k. Who knows how it's gonna work? But you know, it's, but in speed uh, freaks, odds are good that what what they do in speed freaks, they'll do in 40k. Wait, so in speed freaks, I didn't see this post yet. Yeah. So so, so in speed freaks, uh, uh, if you, you cause it's custom dice. It's a specialist game. Of course, so you're rolling some custom dice. It's yeah, d sixes, yeah. but there's different sixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you get like a, a two lightning bolt result or something like that, uh, instead of moving the way that. Uh, buggies normally move in speed freaks, which we'll talk about here in a minute. You could just okay. like place it somewhere within twelve inches, uh, but then you imme- you have to make like an immediate like vehicle handling roll. Otherwise, you go careening out of control <laughs> and crash. Because well, it's if like, it teleports yeah. in speed freaks, exactly. Mm, odds are pretty solid. It's going to be teleporting right. in forty k no, somehow. I, it's got to. I, it's got to. And, and I think like for for the people who are more excited <laughs> about the orc codex than speed freaks, that I'm excited for both. Uh, uh, you can get a good idea of what you can expect in the codex from what we see this week. Okay. Uh, because like the the shock dra- dragster, right? Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like uh, the the whole game kind of is just a a, a loose translation of 40k. Okay. So the way it works is you've got your your uh, uh, movement phase, your shooting phase, your fighting phase. Yeah, that, that sounds stuff. pretty pretty standard. Right. Pretty pretty standard. Uh, it's it's got like you know the the. They are using all 40k equipment. Like you've got a custom shotgun okay. on, on the on the dragster, okay, uh, uh, as well as like a, a, a the custom booster blast that can spit out walls of fire. Yes, uh, as well as like having a, Wait, a, does a, it have a crazy flamethrow? rivet gun. It it's so it's engines. It's got an after <laughs> an afterburner. Nice uh, uh, that that kind of shoots out these jets of flame, and you can like lay down like a little template or something like, like that. behind you when you're driving. Uh huh. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that's what they were talking about. That's and cool. It, it's it's really cool. Uh, the the game itself looks like it'll be a lot of fun. It looks like an interesting sort of resource mechanic uh, management okay. uh, juggling game. 
because uh, you you have like your dashboard, right? And yeah, I've to, seen that. We've seen that. We've seen pictures of that with the with the dice that were on the dashboard. Yeah, you've got, okay. you're, you can allocate them to speed or shooting or cunning and cunning right. for doing whatever weird Wacky stuff. stuff yeah. You have to have at least one speed for every vehicle because no Cause no yeah. orc would ever stop willingly. No brakes. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Um. The uh, but but yeah, like and it's it's really interesting. So the way it works is uh, uh, you, you sort of roll your speed pool and you okay. get that many like you you've seen those like X Men or not X Men X Wing yeah, style yeah. like movement stuff. So it turns oh. out that you're building your your uh, path with oh. that as you go, okay. right? Which okay. is really interesting to me. So you roll yeah. your speed dice. And that's the number of, uh, they, they call them gubbins, but that's the number of, like, uh, little tiles that you can lay down. Okay, because we've seen the pictures of the tile mm -hmm. things. So, yeah. oh, that's how that, that's going to work. Okay, so yeah, you roll so your you, speed, you put you place you, your you tile, place your which tiles, is your path. And then you move along that path. And then depending, like, if you run into something else, you ram it. Uh, well, naturally. Or, or you crash, and you have to, like, make checks to see if you can follow it. Because, like, when you turn and stuff like that, there's a chance... You okay. might go out of control. As, as an orc is, is want to do, yeah. Right. Uh, and, like, depending on, on the position you are when you ram into something, like, different things happen. But, yes. But, uh, basically... It's a close combat, actually. Yeah, so, yeah. so it, you're, you're, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Robo Rally. Okay. Almost, you know, <laughs> except, except it's a little more visible, because you, you, you plan your path, and, and they plan their path, and then you see, like... How much of that? How much of your plan you get to stick to? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. I'm. I'm. I'm even more here. And this one, you just wrote this up for the afternoon, right? Yeah. Like yeah this yeah. is out. This is out. Okay. Let's go check our website for even more details on that one. But man, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it does sound pretty I, cool. I, I had been wondering um, when we f way back when we first heard about Speed Freaks, mm -hmm. uh, if um, if the uh, if the game was actually going to be a game or not. Yeah. So. But it sounds like it's actually going to be a It sounds like cool it's game. actually going to be a, a fun game. Yeah. Uh, it, it's compatible with all of the new Orc vehicles. Uh, they, yeah. they include two in the box that we know of. Yeah. Uh, we know that you're, you'll get the Shop Jump Dragsta and the Custom Booster Blasta in the box. Yeah. Uh, and I I don't... I think the the prices will be out later today, but from, from what the rumors are saying, yeah. it's probably going to be a, a good, like, cheap way or, or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. save you some money if you are looking to pick up both of those cool. as well as some some war bikes and stuff like that cool um, and uh real fast too mars is flagging us down apparently we got some questions about kill team is that what i'm, yes. what I'm saying oh. All right. commander's box. okay Sweet. sure what, what um, you got chat does your commander take over the leader role in in these Sort of. It's a specialist, but not. Let me double check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the exact wording here for you. So, yeah, because yeah, the specialist slot is a little bit weird. Yes. Hang on. All right. Uh, where's yeah? When you add a commander to your kill team or commander roster, you must choose the war gear. Oh, that's the warrior protection. Uh, specialists. Each commander must have a specialization. Yeah. Um, you can't include every... You can never have more than one. You can... You can. Here you go. You can include only a commander in your kill team if you're playing a mission that says in the kill team section uh, that your kill team can include a commander. Unless otherwise stated, a kill team can never include more than one commander. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing a campaign, uh, your command roster cannot include more than one of any particular commander. Uh, commanders don't gain experience points like other members of your kill team. Uh... If a commander takes an enemy special... Oh, that's out of action. Yeah. I think... So it, it sounds like it doesn't necessarily... Uh, uh, it doesn't take the leader slot. Um, exactly. So, again, there are missions in this book that have specific uh, requirements for the commanders to be included. So if you're playing one of those missions, you can include a commander. There are rules in here for the campaigns... Uh, JR, if you want to flip through that real yeah, fast, too. Yeah, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll flip through that. But the commanders function like a special specialist, for, for lack of terminology here. But Yeah, uh, so so the the leader gets like a free specialist. The commanders, I don't I don't know exactly. Uh, they have their own set of uh, uh, special specialist roles to, to pick from. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, I know what to check, too. Check, uh, flip real fast to one of the commanders. Do they have the leader keyword? I don't think they do. That's what... They have the commander keyword. Yeah, but that's different than the other one. Yeah. So, no, they don't take the leadership slot. They are in addition to, or... They're, they. It functions like a specialist. 
That's the best way I can phrase that. And I have one more. Yeah. Is it true that there are options or rules in the individual faction commander boxes that are not covered in the primary commander rule book? Yes, that is true. Um, yes. So they... Now, I don't think it's, like, a, 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 a ton for each of them. Like, I think you'll still be able to play any of the, the commanders. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just uh, you get special tactics. Uh, special. Uh, it's like uh, main characters. You, you get stratagems. Uh, that 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 specific commander can yeah. use. It's yeah. it's like name. It's like a named character specialist uh, uh, tactics or whatever. They're pretty. Cl I would say they're fairly close to. Yeah. They're fairly close to the ones you the generic ones you can run, uh, or that are included in here too. Um, I don't think the some of the commanders in here do have their own. Well, tactics they, they, they all have their own tactics. Yeah. They're, they're they're saying like if if you buy the box, you get access. You get to tactics that ones. aren't that aren't correct. In the book. That yeah. is that is correct. That. Like the orcs, the the war boss has like a, a mega wog orc tactic, which is a commander or a for for two command points. Yeah, that's exclusive to the war boss. Well, and and if you buy the the uh, like special one of the eight commanders right. that they, they're gonna have, you'll get a tactic that's not that. Yeah, exactly. That you can also so use. if you buy the orc war boss, he probably will have access to this because yeah. if he has the war boss keyword, then right. he will. But he'll have the other. But he'll have a different. He'll yeah. have additional ones that aren't in this book. Yep. And I have one more, and it's a follow up to the um, commander takeover legal. Yeah. Um, are you still obligated to have a leader, or are you playing with just a commander? It's a scenario specific. Uh, okay. Let me pull up yeah, one of the scenarios. Let's take a look at one of the scenarios and kind of see, like, okay, yeah. if we're if we're pulling in a commander, what does it say? Yeah. Get to. Um, here we go. Taking a look at the book. Okay. Uh, let's let's see if we can find one of the match play missions because that'll be like yeah the most these are open heavy. play narrative, narrative play. play narrative play obviously yeah where are the match play back here They're at the very back okay yeah. uh da -da -da. two to four players that's okay that's what we're looking at choose a battleforge kill team from the kill team core manual uh, that only includes models from the faction keyword each kill team can cost up to two hundred points and must include must include one commander so uh it looks like you. Let me grab the other kill team book just to be yeah. safe, but it looks like you would need to. Yeah, as far as we can tell, it still says you yeah. Choose a kill team choose a Battleforge kill team from the kill team core manual. So you're gonna use the core manual book. The kill team book I think is Oh it's it. I it's didn't... in the box. I oh think. okay. But uh the kill team yeah, so you're gonna build your kill team. It's Battleforge based off of the core kill team manual. The only difference is that uh, again, 200 points worth of stuff, uh, but it must include one commander. So if there's any requirements, um, I would assume that actually because like the uh, um, th these are the match play rules as well, so a little bit more stringent there. So, um, but it doesn't say anything about replacing your leader. Uh, I'm reading the calms down mission. There's also a meeting of fates. That's another example. Uh, same deal with that one. Only restrictions I'm reading here: each kill team can cost up to 200 points. And must include one commander. So again, from what that tells me is, it's basically like a specialist. You just have to include one. Um, they vary in points as well, depending on how how much you load them out. Um, I know that the Broodlord at level four is 196 points as a, a, a level four model. So I don't know how that functions within uh, <laughs> within the core manual compared to you know requirements there. So, is it not in the thing? Oh, okay. Well, come on back, JR. Don't worry about it, man. Okay. But yeah, use the Kill Team Core Manual and this book and build a commander. Is that... That's about as clear as I can make it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, 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 that might be a thing for the FAQ. Um, yeah. Uh, but... Because, like, what happens if you do spend all your points in your commander? Yeah. Like a, like a gene stealer? Because uh, I totally would. Maybe maybe you can if you're supposed to make a Battleforge yeah. Kill Team. Um, yeah. I mean, it's still technically Battleforge. They they have the same keyword. Well, yes, but, but yeah. Any more questions on Kill Team? Does that kind of help out, chat? Is that? Sorry. <laughs> Good luck with that one. But yeah, Kill Team. Uh, if you want to use them, oh, the campaign rules too. Let me just go back to that real fast. Of course. Um, including them in the campaign. Uh, let's see. Your command roster cannot include more than one of any particular commander. Commanders don't gain XP. Uh, right. Commanders takes, that takes an enemy specialist out of action treat any roll of eight made for that model. That's a casualty roll check. 
Specialist gains one uh, experience point after mission if it's... T okay, that's just how they gain experience points. Um, yeah, again, the commander... The commander rules in here for even campaign play. Yeah. There's no reference in here about it replacing the leader or anything like that. Um... It, it does say that they lead your kill team, but or that you like you you know you when you have a commander that's it's led by the commander, but it doesn't it doesn't explicitly say anywhere that it replaces your leader your required leader specialization choice yeah. or anything like that. Because all kill teams start with a uh, leader and then dudes. So, yeah. but yeah, as far as I can tell, again, treat them like a specialist. Yeah, like like an additional like an additional specialist required model. Yes. Yeah. If if it's required, if you're playing one of the missions, right. That says you have to have a commander. So, yeah. Is that, yeah, opaque as mud. Yeah. Cool. Clear like a window. I don't know. But anyway, you'll be able to find out for yourself on Saturday when it comes out for sure. You so, will. Um, I, I'm I'm definitely would check this one out though. If you if you are yeah. playing Kill Team, it's worth checking out just because it does add a ton of options. Yeah, so. it it really does. You get to do like. You, you had to put the system through its paces. Yes. Uh, speaking of putting things through its paces, so uh, more stuff that yeah. we, can, we can talk about from Orcs, jumping back oh, over. Oh, all right. Uh, Shifting so, gears to Mad Max Thunderdome. Yeah. So you remember time. how we were talking about how a lot of these Orcs look like they'd have close combat weapons on their vehicles, right? Yeah, totally. They're so orcs. <clears throat> uh, in the rules preview today, we got to see that they, at least in Speed Freaks, they do. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so like the the scrap jet, for instance. Tell me, it's got like a ram thing. It's got, it's got a crazy turbine yes. turbine drill uh, that that like gives it extra damage when it's ramming. Uh, but that as makes, it should, which which makes me think that like when we see it in forty k, uh, it's definitely going to do something because they they're 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 yeah. showing you like these are the things you're going to use in forty k or in uh, uh, speed freaks. Yeah. So. So it's showing you what, what what's going on in Speed Freaks, and right. it's easy to extrapolate out what's possible in 40k with these models. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you charged with the scrap jet, for instance, you hit someone with that drill, you dish out some mortal wounds or something. Oh, yeah, you, know? you get stuck in that drill, you're toast, man. Yeah. So uh, I could see or that. Or at least to, like, infantry or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? there's, there's plenty of models already that do this. There's, like, the, uh, the, the Carnifexes. Yeah, they when have they, a, when they, they have charge, charge in, they, 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 they deal mortal wounds. On like to, a four up or whatever, yeah. they, do, they do a mortal wound. I would, yeah. I would not be at all surprised to see stuff like that. Yeah, actually, that's a thing that's already in the game, yeah. So Yeah, I actually kind of have been thinking of these new buggies as like monsters almost, you know? I mean, it's fitting ever since the, the changes in 8th to vehicles basically converted vehicles into, you know, monstrous creatures essentially. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Fa facing doesn't really yeah. matter. The, the only things that function where you have to worry about which way they're going and stuff like that are, are flyers. Yeah. Um, Very true. Yeah, with a 360 line of sight. I mean, they are basically... Yeah, they're, they're basically big monsters yeah. that move fast, which I think is going to be great for orcs. I think we've touched on this before. It might not have been on the stream per, per chance, but I know we were talking about how the addition of Speed Freaks really does change up how the orcs can play and build It does, now. yeah. Because um, I think we might have talked about this last week. I can't remember now, but... The um, it changes the play style up because you usually you see orcs they're all like mounted up in, in battle wagons or trucks or something like that yeah or they're all on foot yeah um, you might see the occasional like morkanad or, or stomper or something like that but that's but but for the yeah. most part they're they're kind of on foot or just like in random transports yeah. to get out and then fight you on foot yeah they don't have a lot of of I would say dedicated uh essentially light cav vehicles. Yeah. I feel like the Speed yeah. Freaks are going to implement that light cav right. for the for the orcs and, well, they and actually be able to shoot out and tie stuff up. And I think, again, we've talked about this before, but I think it just is a really interesting addition yeah, to it. It'll their... be really interesting to see what they can do because yeah. one, one of the best vehicles in the game is the humble rhino. <laughs> you, you, that thing moves 12 inches and then it can it can yeah. charge. It can charge. Rhinos can charge. You just move, uh, charge, tie tie something up. Like, yeah, Even if it you, doesn't you're not going to kill it. Yeah, you're gonna bog them down. But if these orc vehicles like actually can kill things, move twelve, charge into combat, kill a bunch of stuff. I mean, they're vehicles too, so they're probably at least toughness five or six. I would at think. least, and have if some, not, some kind if of not armor. toughness seven. 
Because the rhino, the rhino is tough in a seven. I don't know if they're going to be that good, but but I would assume right, that but, I would assume but, they're at least five or six, and they're going to have multiple wounds. They're not going to have like three wounds. They're going to no, have, have like six like, or something like that. At, at least, at yeah. least, maybe there'll be ten, ten or more wounds. Ooh, see now that right? now, that would be really like interesting. like how would that look, right? Like yeah. if, if they're if they're the the damage track kind of things, because it, it well they could like they could yeah they could they could have uh, or a they go ramshackle yeah so. And like, well, and as they degrade, not only do they get worse, but maybe bits of them start flying off or exploding or whatever. That'd and be you, cool. You know that there's going to be some kind of special explosion rule for that, like oh, shock, man. shock jump drag stuff. Oh, I hope so. You know what'd be a cool thing is like as they're degrading, every uh-huh. time they drop a tear, something explodes. That'd be kind of fun. That'd yeah, be kind of fun. That'd be kind of amazing. roll. Roll to see if it explodes. Um, maybe not roll. A parts of it break off. Yeah, parts of it break off and explode. Yeah. They're de- they're designed to do that. Um, I'm I'm excited to see what the squig uh, yeah. buggy does because squigs are hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just eat everything. Yeah, um, all the time. Um, <laughs> it was funny. Gio, you put up that poll. Was like, what do you think it's going to be? Option A, B, or C? And I was like, it's going to be all three. Yeah. Because the the caveat was like, if you guys all guess correctly. The, or if you if the majority of people guess correctly, then we're gonna reveal the model. And I was like, so what happens if they don't guess correctly? Are you just not gonna pre- release right. this model? And they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna so. do it. So it turned out to be all three. Yeah. So, so it's it's a landmine delivery system. It's a it's a food truck. It's a modified food truck. Uh huh. And it and it squigs. It squigs. So all all combined. all combined into one. Called it. Was all I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. Did. I did. We, did. I mean, it had to. It, it was too. It, you, you can't not. And plus, all the reactions were like Facebook, like thumbs up or likes or basically ways to get you to interact with the post. Right. Which is that's a whole back end thing. Whatever. That's boring. Anyway, uh, but we're looking forward to seeing how all of these new Oryx vehicles play. Uh, we know that there's like one weekend left to get pre-orders in, so that means probably I next mean, weekend we're gonna see the Oryx Codex announced for pre-order. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little little frustrating. That October is basically gonna end up being like the last weekend of of October, <laughs> right? Uh, for for orc releases, and then we'll probably get some in November. But right. I guess orcs aren't good at telling time or something. Orc October show up into orc November, yeah, yeah, orc November. That's what they should have gone with, right? I don't know, but it'll it'll be neat. That stuff's coming. Um, in the meantime, GW's been GW has been pumping out the releases we saw. Uh, mm-hmm. The Warhound last week. We did. Uh, we actually got yeah. to try them out in a game of Adeptus Titanicus uh, yeah. last week. Which what was did you? Fun. Now you ran the you ran the Warhounds. I ran the Warhounds. I got to shoot at the Warhounds. Yes. Uh, f- from my perspective, things were looking pretty hairy. Yeah. Uh, and then something happened. So uh, Adeptus Titanicus is a very swinging game. From it can time be. To time. Well, it can it's, be. it's smaller model. Can- we were playing a smaller game. Yeah, we were we were playing uh, a warlord and uh, it, it, yeah, knights. It was, a, it was about like I want to say like seven eight hundred points ish. Yeah, warlord and knights versus a reaver and some warhounds. And uh, basically, uh, uh, the warhounds were were warhounding it up. Uh, yeah, we, we got to like try out uh, some of the the new rules. Like, yeah. warhounds can merge their void shields, so yeah. that means that even if like one is shields down, it can it, it, can, it can still it can cover the other one. Yeah. You have to take out two different void yeah. shields uh, before you do, which can be a yeah. problem because uh, the warlords were <laughs> dropping uh, uh, <laughs> volcano cannon pie plates mm-hmm. on the warhounds and able to hit If they're touching, like, then it hits them both. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so, but I thought it was interesting too, the warhounds, because they, they function, you, they can function as a squadron. Mm-hmm. Squadron rules in Adeptus Titanic is basically mean you activate them at the same time and they can kind of move around each other. Yeah. They, not they, move around, but like, they, they, they move... They move uh, you basically get two activations out of one yeah. on one turn, basically. Yeah. Uh, so it can be a, like a pretty good tactical advantage. Mm-hmm. There's there's no real downside to them because there's no like coherency or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so you basically get to decide like, all right, I'm going to move one warhound. Now I'm going to move another. And now it's your turn. Yeah. Um, and they both get to move, and then they'll both eventually get to shoot and all yeah. that good stuff. It was um, a it was an interesting game. Uh, I thought when we were going into it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell them what happened first and then tell them what... Yeah, what, so uh, yeah. I had I wiped out Adam's knights. Yes, uh, the knights were then, gone. then my reaver titan exploded. It went from full health, from untouched, to completely dead because my reactor overloaded. Uh, and then that was the game. <laughs> yeah. I was living the dream of Adeptus Titanic is everything blowing up all at once. That, those reactors are a little... Can be a little stay out of the red. Yeah, uh, reactors are no joke. Yeah. Uh, you you yeah. want to watch out when you're firing a draining weapon. Yeah, uh, we were we were playing with the advanced rules where there's like a fun table to roll on. Yeah, and, and of course there's a table, so 
of course, course we're, we're gonna, gonna roll, roll on it, yeah. and of course one of the results is you explode, you explode. Everything near you takes uh, uh, D three strength, we, whatever. We it checked hits. like three times because I was like, "What? That seems pretty harsh." But and there it was. Yeah, but that's that totally turned the game around. And, it, it did. But but you <laughs> had a, going in. It, it was very interesting to see the uh, the the Reavers and the Warhounds working in concert against a bigger target because. Mm-hmm. What I found was really interesting was um, I couldn't t- really turn yeah. to, to face one of the two targets because J-Hard run, was running him on the flanks. Mm-hmm. And so my my options were like, do I just kind of stay here and miss shots with my uh, carapace-mounted weapons, which on the Warlord don't rotate. They have to right. fire from they the do. arc. So am I going to sacrifice those shots or am I going to turn and offer flank shots to one of these approaching right. things? And apparently I chose wisely because the, the turn that I did decide to pivot, your reaver blew up. Yes. So it is what it is. But <laughs> next time, JR, next time. I just thought it was really interesting the yeah. way the way it played out. It, it was it's really fun. Uh, the Warhounds are a fantastic new addition. I really yeah. like them. Uh, they can they can kind of punch above their weight. Yeah. Uh, you, you really got to be careful about how you build them out. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But uh, if, if you r- really kind of focus fire with them and, and make use of, like, coordinated strikes, uh, they, they can they can be mean. Uh, they oh, are, yeah. They are fragile. If, if your opponent tries to take them out, they will. So you got to really, like, be careful mm-hmm. with how you position them, uh, take advantage, try, uh, try, like, if you know, okay, they're probably going to get shot this turn, I'll, I'll link up my void shield, yep. but... but you know, maybe maybe I won't always be touching. Yeah, maybe I hide behind buildings, or, or if you're playing with that taller terrain to get mm-hmm. around stuff. Uh, the other big, the, the the other deadly thing was was JR was actually able to get within the uh, the ten inch range, mm-hmm. so I couldn't shoot my carapace missiles at him anyway. Mm-hmm. So that was a that was an interesting thing too to to, to mess with the different height sizes and, and actually get to see that in play. Yeah. I thought it was cool. I I thought so as well. It was yeah. a, a, a ton of fun. Um, I would I would definitely play him again. They're up, they're back here. Yep. Um, oh there, no. goes, there goes there a goes gun. An arm. Yeah, we have them all magnetized too, which is pretty handy. Um, definitely recommending that. We've we've brought that up multiple times. I think last week we showed off kind of where to magnetize them. Yeah. But I think they're 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 cool looking models. Are a great addition to the game. They're it's it's yeah. a lot of fun. If you guys have not played Adeptus Titanicus, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, yeah. It's it's got a lot more depth. It's like it's like a kind of like a. a, a battleship combat game almost because you're you're big and like you know your, your momentum really kind of matters and like where you're going where you're facing all that stuff yeah the facing if, it's, if, not, if some, it's not some momentum more than the, the, the facing the facing and yeah. the, the number of turns you can do that that's like that. which if you mean yeah, yeah the, the agility maneuver, yeah. yeah definitely then. so basically if if you want like that classic 40k vehicle feel mm-hmm. uh, this oh is, yeah this is the the game for you for for me personally too this uh this is a definite throwback or like Slight, slight nod, I would say, to to playing Battletech, which was the game that got me into tabletop oh, gaming. Oh, absolutely! Um, with with the hexes and the and the facings and stuff like that actually mattering. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not the same game. Let me, let me say that it's not Battletech. It's not Battletech, yeah. But it's uh, it's a very, uh, it's got the same spirit. Yeah. In, in my mind, the, the 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 managing of your heat. So that you don't detonate. Right. The um, the, the, the fact that different yeah. weapon systems can get damaged. Rolling or, piloting, you know, command checks to try to get the orders. Yeah. D- damaging different systems, like Jero saying. Uh, we we discuss like I got one of my weapons disabled. Yeah. And, and I thought it was gonna blow up, but it takes two hits to. Do it that. takes two hits to to flip a weapon, which is yeah. Pro tip. Anyway. Yeah. But it was um, really fun. I rematch, right? We're gonna rematch. Yeah, we'll rematch for sure. Yeah. Uh, Mars, can we talk about the? Uh, what is it that's coming back? Dark Apocrypha possibly coming back? Mm-hmm. Can you can you th- throw some info on us for that real fast? Or? Sure. Yeah. Um, for those of you who have been with us for a while, I'm just going to talk from over yeah. here. Yeah. Um, we did a game series three days a week for yeah. about a year, and had to kind of bring back, you know, kind of scale back on what we were doing for filming. Yeah. But, we were filming a lot. <laughs> yeah, and the next month we're gonna have a. 40k game every other week and an Age of Sigmar game every other week on Thursday night starting at 7 p.m. Central. Sweet. So are both those games going to happen on the same Thursday or is it alternating? It's alternating. Yeah, so we're going to have basically it's going to be at least one game a week starting again next I think next, we're going to start in November. Starting in November ideally if we can get everything lined up and I think yeah. we will at that point. Yeah. Um, one game a week 
40k Age of Sigmar, and maybe maybe some yeah. specialist games. Maybe. And it's all casual, fun, no yeah. competitive. Uh, so yeah. just come in and hang with us. Yeah. Um, Those will be on Thursday nights as yeah. well. So. Yep. And we've got some really fun people who uh, who really enjoy having fun with their games, uh, yeah. including Goat Boy. Yes. And uh, Aventine, who's our painter, and he's yeah. actually played with us before. Yeah. We, we have so. told uh, Goat Boy that pants are required. Pants are not optional for playing, Thomas. So. Yeah. They are oh, when he's doing the pink stream. That's a whole different ball of wax. Right. But, but yeah, we're, we're pretty pumped about that. That's going to uh, be fun. We may be showing up occasionally. You know, Jared and I, uh, we do still play games. What? No. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're both pretty excited yeah, to at least have, a, have that back on the stream. So. Uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, games of 40K... Um, where are you going with this one? Let's talk about Dungeons & Dragons. That's a really awkward transition, <laughs> but we're going to make it happen. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Boom. There's no uh, Warhounds. There's no Warhounds in D&D. There could be. Though. I mean, there could be. Yeah. No, he's staying there. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mix so, your DD uh, and your 40k. One of the other things that we saw over the weekend uh, were a couple of previews of yeah uh, the upcoming Dungeon of the Mad Mage, which is set in Waterdeep. Uh, yeah, that's why we have the Dragon Heist book out here. It's my favorite, my favorite book. I love it so much. I uh, yes, every book comes out from 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 Wizards uh -huh. is just a, it's just better than the last. That's really hard to say. Yeah, because there's been some there, there real are, gems lately. There are some lately. amazing ones out there. No, yeah. I, I I love the I love what it does. I love how it adds to the to the game. It kind of tells you like I'm gonna run urban adventures. Mm -hmm. Stuff in the city is gonna look like this. D and D. I really like Volo's Guide. Volo's Guide is amazing. Xanathar's Guide. I really is, like. They're, they're all really guide. good. Oh. They're all my favorite. But uh, this one I've been talking about a lot lately, so I feel like it's sort of my. Yeah, uh, uh, I was gonna ask too. Uh, wasn't there a, some kind of magic item, or was that something differently that he showed off this weekend? Uh, that was uh, something different. Oh, uh, okay. That's something that they just we'll, built we'll circle on the back stream. around. Yeah, we'll come back around to that. Yeah. No, uh, they. So they. Um, uh, well, I can, I can talk about that real quick because it's okay. Super, what it, super so easy. So you were because so you were both excited yeah, about this. Uh, one of the things that they they have been doing uh, is uh, kind of talking about uh, tying in with the unearthed arcana that they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This last week's Unearthed Arcana was the uh, magic items of Eberron. Ooh. And so, in order to uh, talk about uh, what... Uh, in order to just kind of show off like what goes into game design, because mm -hmm. they've, they've been... Really uh, uh, opening up that a lot. Like yeah, Mike Merles cool. has the happy fun hour where he kind of <laughs> just does game design. He talks yeah, about yeah, how yeah. going to work on player subclasses or yeah. different rule systems for the game. That's where we've seen like psionics get developed yeah. uh, and, and kind of work out. Uh, that's where we've seen like um, uh, different subclasses that, yeah. that might one day show up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, in fact, uh, know that one of them is going to show up. So the Order Domain Cleric, which was one of the ones featured on the happy fun hour. Yeah. Uh, the the order domain cleric is showing up in the guildmaster's guide to Ravnica. Very cool. Yeah. So so stuff that you see there, you know, is may stuff eventually that's, well, percolate it's, over. It's yeah. stuff that he's working on. It's stuff yeah. that, that like people are excited about. It's so, like real stuff. Yeah, it's, it's not just like pipe it's dreams, real right? stuff in the game. Yeah. Uh, and so speaking of those, so, so we yeah. we saw like the process for designing a magic item. I don't want to go uh, too much into detail because you should just watch that. You should just watch it to talk about it. Yeah. But I will say, intelligent item. Wondrous item, swords. All right, I'll let you. I'll let you guys put. It. It's 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 cool stuff. It's it's just a different take on like what a magic item can be. I'm thinking of a couple of of big name kind of sentient weapons essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like wave and whelm and all that stuff. Yeah, but this is this one was different, right? This like, one this, is different. Yeah. It's not just like the. I don't want to spoil it either, but it's yeah. not the bloodthirsty it's, typical. It's not what you would think. Feed me souls. It's, it's not what you think. It's um, not. But so let's talk about the dungeon of the Mad Mage. Yes, uh, because this is a whole bunch of cool stuff that you can you can figure. I out. I am so excited for so this. So one adventure. of the things in uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, this is like a, the the mega dungeon follow up to Waterdeep yeah. Dragon Heist. Uh, real real quick recap. Yeah. Uh, Waterdeep Dungeon Heist Dragon Heist is designed for one to five. One to five, and at at the climax of the adventure, you go into the dungeon spoilers. of Undermountain. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's been out for a while, yeah. so spoilers. But you go into the dungeon of Undermountain. To find this like half a million yeah. gold piece treasure that's being the guarded dragons. by a dragon, you have to have a special magic item to let the dragon like let you take the. Well, well, 
Long story short. Long story short. It, one to five. May, it ends. It ends with you checking out Under Mountain for the first time. Yeah, and then the next adventure. The, the next the, adventure. The Mad Mage. Right. Is the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Now we don't know how exactly this one starts, but we do know that it's basically all about Under Mountain. And it is. It is designed for parties uh, from level from six le- all to the way 20. to twenty. So which like, is exciting. Yeah. This is this is the first like super high level adventure yeah. that we've seen because like Storm King's Thunder is probably the next closest one, and that's like yeah. that caps out around sixteen. Yeah. What what I really appreciate about this particular Waterdeep series, mm-hmm. just kind of from a high level, is this shows you a fully fleshed out D and D city. Yeah. And not just any city, but it's Waterdeep. So it's like one of the crown jewels yeah. of the D D universe. This is like this is the city that people think and, about. And uh, from what we've been seeing, yeah. Dungeon of the Mad Mage is gonna do the same but for yes, dungeons. Exactly. Uh, which which I love. So we've yes. seen we've seen uh two sections on it so far. We've seen like level sixteen or something yeah. like that. We've seen one of the higher level uh dungeons previewed and we've seen one of the lower level dungeons previewed, and, and yeah. lower level meaning like this is geared for six, level six characters who should be level seven by the time they're done right, exploring right, right. this dungeon, and it's it's crazy. Like I love it, I love it so much. It kind of has that like classic D and D kind of feel to it. And they've done dungeons and and like layers and stuff in the past, but this feels this very feels different. very different. Like so, it's a blueprint to how to make epic long dungeons and so the the we, we saw the second level of under mm-hmm. mountain previewed and on this one we know that there's a lot going on we know that there are mm-hmm. goblins there's like a goblin uh, a <laughs> gang that are sort of rebels from the xanathar's guild yeah uh, they've stolen a bunch of stuff and they've set up their own like black market goblin bazaar on the second level which is stuff like there th- and remember yeah. these these are this is like a sixth level dungeon right yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so your players are gonna like not care about a whole bunch of goblins but they're there to be interacted with yes. they've got stuff for sale they've got quests uh one of the leaders of the goblins found an amulet that turned him human and so now he's taller than everyone else and yeah. he's really rubbing everyone's noses in it well, that's great uh, and, that is and fantastic. like one of the things that they suggest is some some of the goblins might hire the players to try and cure their leader yeah. so that he's not such a tall jerk anymore right cure him um, with stab wounds but then, on top of that, <laughs> the the Xanathar's Guild is in there, yeah. uh, uh, trying to reclaim their lost stuff and just kind of you know do shady thieves guild things anyway. That's what that's what they do. Well, the, um, uh, uh, the Xanathar is trying to seize like the under part of the city back yeah, again, yeah. and at level two before you go that much in really isn't into the dungeon complex. It's right, just sort right. Of a part of it. I think it's great because it shows us this cool ecosystem that is the that has become of the dungeons. Yeah. Have you ever wondered, like, hey, there's all these monsters in this dungeon. How do they interact when, like, players aren't trying to loot these dungeons? Yeah. Like, do they they just wander the halls and, and do nothing? You like, see, what do they eat? You see, like, a there's the, yeah. there's a drow gang there yeah. working for, for the Xanathar. What but, are they even doing down there? Well, they're, uh, they're, they are looking to figure out what... To try and reclaim some lost territory. But then also... Because that's not, that's not it. Yeah. Like, on, on one page, we've already got two different factions... But wait, there's more because you also get the Zentarim, uh, the the, okay. the like secret evil organization, yeah, 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 sort of for the Forgotten Realms. They're vaguely evil but mostly profit centered, uh, and they <laughs> vaguely evil but mostly profit centered. You know, they're uh, okay. They have their agents there as well. They have a gang of were rats who are hanging out there. Master Splinter, right? Uh, All right. In the sewers, basically. Yeah, Master Splinter. They have a gang of were rats who are there to hang out, and then the the cover art for this level shows off rust monsters. So there's just like a ton of stuff happening, and also rust monsters. Right? And also rust monsters. There's just like a ton of stuff. Hey, have you ever here. seen a high level warrior freak out? They're um, a rust monster. Yeah, because they'll dissolve even magic items. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, you, you, if you're attached fantastic. to that magic sword, you might lose it. Yeah. Uh, you gonna risk it? You gonna risk it, buddy? Yeah. It's 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 really cool. There's yeah. there's just a lot happening. And then in one of the higher level ones, we know that the caverns of ooze have like ooze happening everywhere. But we also know that there's like that the uh, uh, mind flayer, who is the space pirate basically, yeah. captain of a spell jammer. Yeah. We know there's a spell jammer in the dungeon itself. How do they well. all get in there, man? That's uh, my that's what I want to know. A wizard did it. A wizard, yeah. of course. The, a the wizard. mad mage I mean, we himself. Knew that. 
uh, Halaster Black Cloak. So yeah. he's he's like an immortal wizard. Or he's tied to the dungeon. He's tied to the dungeon. He's yeah. he's uh, thousands of years old. Yeah. Uh, he just goes around being a crazy wizard, doing crazy wizard things. I mean, yes. Yeah. So it's the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. That's coming out in November. That is coming out. Yeah, it's yeah, coming it's out a, early November. It too. is a perfect companion follow-up adventure for Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Yeah, um, I think I Jr. Think... is obviously super pumped about it. I'm pretty pumped about it. Just because, again, it's a template for like the ultimate dungeon crawl. Yeah, right? and, and November second and November 9th will both see uh, the the like friendly local game store like the select game store releases. Yeah, if your of, game store does like the special promo things right. and they get into They'll the get release. them early so you'll yeah. be able to see uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage and uh, the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica both before the actual release date of this which I think is November 13th. Yeah, when they go live everywhere. When they're live like yeah. in wide release. Uh, yeah. uh, and then Have November we... 20th for the Guildmaster's Guide so I, I do believe. We've seen some previews for Dungeon of Mad Mage. Uh -huh. And Again, super exciting stuff. Have we seen any more previews for Ravnica? Uh, so we know a little bit about it. Um, yeah. We know that, and yeah, there's a bunch of preview stuff. Nothing like super new yeah. uh, right now. Um, just we know that the the Order Domain Cleric is going to yep. be in there. Yep. The uh, the Circle of Spores Druid is going to be in there. <laughs> yep. uh, they use mushrooms. They're a, that's a really interesting class. Because that's a fun guy. Yeah, it's a fun guy to play. Yeah, fun uh, guy to play. Because yep. it's, uh, well, and it's like this like hybrid melee damage dealing class, Ooh. but you are you don't spend most but of your time druids. wild shifting. Yeah, you're, you're uh, wild shaped. You're, you're just like, I'm I'm in there fighting you with my with my weapons and Have my, some my spores. spores. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, we know that there's going to be different races and yeah. uh, I think a few new feats. Uh, I'm I'm real excited to see what this one is like. Um, yeah, it sounds pretty cool, man. Uh, like I said, and Ravnica again is from Magic the Gathering and that whole Planeswalker stuff, mm -hmm. and the, the fact that they're actually bringing that in. Yeah, and this war. is yeah, this is going to be like yeah. official playtested content. It'll be Adventurers League legal and all of that yeah. stuff. Uh, so you can You're play... getting your magic in my D and D. Yeah, I mean, wizard owns them both, so mm. it, it's it's are about you saying, time. Are really. you saying a wizard did it? A wizards did it. A wizards did it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am saying that. Uh, we know, we know also that um, uh, the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron is nearing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, is continuing. So that was a it's a PDF you can get in the DM's Guild right now. Yeah, uh, and that's kind of being play tested as it goes. So it's it's something that they released uh, at the near the end of summer. And uh, tell the folks at home uh, what is the DM deal? DM's Guild. The exactly? DM's Guild is uh, Wizards of the Coast's like community hub. Yeah, uh, it's where where you can find community created content, uh, mm -hmm. and you can find if you're looking for like okay, but anyone can go put something up on D and D, which they they can. Like, yeah. If you've got an idea for an adventure, you can write it Boom. and throw it up there. You can use their licensed content and everything under the DM's Guild. Yeah, uh, I love it. It's got some really cool stuff. Uh, uh, you can find stuff that's part of what they call the DM's Guild Adept, which is stuff that kind of WotC looks at and kind of puts their little mark of approval Kind of on. like gold star for that yeah. one, keep an eye on that uh, content. Yeah. Yeah, which is what the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron is, is, is part of. Uh, it's, yeah. it's this like living document that will eventually get uh, solidified into a final play test or play ready form Yeah. Uh, that, that will be released as a print on demand book. Yes, uh, and that will be illegal for the adventurers. Will that if be? You play that. Will that be like the official return of Eberron? Yeah, well, I mean, it already is, right? So the whole reason they've been doing yeah. that is so that uh, D and D community creators can make Eberron stuff. That's something yeah. that, that people are clamoring for. Uh, yes. Right now, you can in fact find. I talked about it this morning. You can find a, a, an adventure like path kind of thing, Ooh. like a four. I think it's four adventures, maybe more. Uh, that's being written by uh, uh, Keith Baker, who's the creator of Eberron. Like right, him and, right, right. And Bill Slavisek and all that stuff. Yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. Working with wizards, they, they made Eberron. This is all um, way back in the day. When way they, back when in they the first day. First introduced back in Eberron. Like 2000. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, math. Oh, boy. We played We played, we played for a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but one of the things that they're they're doing right now is sort of this this like intro adventure uh, that's, that's kind of shows off what's cool about Eberron. And Warforged. it's called The Fear Reveals the Truth. War Warforged. Warforged. Uh, Warforged, mystery, noir, crazy yeah. magic. Yeah, for, uh, for, if cultists. you're not familiar with Eberron... This is like a whirlwind introduction for yeah. you and your players. I love the Eberron setting. Like, mm -hmm. That was one of the one of my 
early D and D. Uh, when I came back to D and D, that was one of right. the early uh, settings we played in. I loved it because of the Warforged. I liked the like the crazy elemental crystals, and all all that yeah, crazy I, stuff. I like I like the lightning rail, which is like yeah. a magic elemental train. Yeah, uh, it's so, it's so it's cool. So much fun. It's like well, a steampunk, yeah, steam, a... steampunk fantasy meets D and D. Yeah, magic, and it's just it's, it's like Magitech, right? Magitech. Like, it's Magitech. Yeah, everything is done with magic and yeah. crazy crystals and warforged and warforged. Yeah. Uh, there is Robots. in fact there in so there is a, there's a flesh covered warforged in one of the adventures. Is it the model T eight hundred? It, it 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 will be Cyberdyne? back. It might be looking for Sarah Connor. I don't know. <laughs> or John. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> it's cool and creepy. Yeah. A don't know bit how both. I feel about a that. Bit of both. But uh, does it? I guess that fixes the whole like you need repair rolls instead of healing potions. Well, but. I don't know. I mean, well, it's just it's just covered in flesh. It isn't necessarily like actually on there. Uh, that's just we'll gross call, now. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's that's not even like. Uh, but the the adventures are are a ton of fun. Check them out uh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. the DM's Guild. Uh, you can check out the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron there as well. Uh, you can read more about the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, Ravnica and uh, the upcoming Dungeon of the Mad Mage on yes. our site because I'm like typing He's away. He's doing it like like this. Uh, I've seen him. That's uh, exactly to, how he types. To to get all the news out to you guys as, as we dig it up. There's so much cool stuff going on right now. We yeah. got a ton more stuff coming out. this November week. is going to be a huge month for games because we're going to see like. All of the orc stuff actually get released, so we'll have that yep. here. Gale Force uh, 9's, Gale Force uh, Nine's their new, book or new, the game, uh, sorry, new game. The, the Waterdeep uh, uh, Water Adventure, Deep, which Vault is of the Dragons, super cool is coming out. Yeah, and their miniatures as well. Yep. And uh, we're we'll gonna, have Speed Freaks, Freaks proper at that point. We'll have right? orcs, and we're gonna oh. get. Uh, we'll probably get Dungeon of the Mad Mage and the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. So like. Go November and probably into December because oh, there's yeah. only so many of us. And so much gaming to do. Uh, <laughs> with true. that in mind, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go lie down for. He's a gonna while. lie down. He's he's hyperventilating. Ugh. Breathe, Jared. Breathe. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, this has been another Bulls tabletop hour. Thanks again for watching. I'm Adam Harry. I'm Jr. Have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.